<laughs> what would you do without me? <laughs> oh, man. Jonesy, I didn't get you a box score, but I promise I'll get you one. Okay, I want a box on score. Monday, on Monday. So we want what we want. When I, I want a box score, man. You know I can't operate without my numbers. <laughs> I know. You're going to give us hey, a telling stat of the night. <laughs> these wings. Sure, there's too many people. What too many people. You're so nervous, man. I'm <laughs> not nervous. Either you can do it or you can't. No, but I'm locked in now. If what I miss, trying to do? I'm trying to miss. It's a bit deep. It's light work. <laughs> you want to go? Uh huh. You want to go? I, I made it yesterday. Oh, off the glass and good. Put that wall there. Yeah, I mean, wall there. That's, that's light work. Hey, what did I tell you? I didn't use the glass, though. What did I tell you yesterday? I didn't use the glass. Well, well, I didn't use the glass. It's not a tough shot. was missing. Nervous and stuff. The Toronto Raptors run out of steam against Tyrese Maxey and the Philadelphia 76ers. 112-90 is your final. Live from Real Sports, welcome to Raptors tonight. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Paul Jones, Sherman Hamilton, and newly acquired through free, free agents, or did we trade anybody? Oh, we didn't trade anybody. Let the new guy talk. I got to eat, bro. <laughs> free agent contracts are kind of heavy. Alvin Williams is in the house. Take one right now, though, hey. wouldn't you? Hey. In a hurry. Could you play right now? You look could like you could, could you, you could play right now. I wouldn't embarrass myself. I got kids, man. <laughs> you, look, you look like the Raptors could have used you tonight. For what? <laughs> Tyrese Maxey? I, I can guard George Niang. <laughs> Hey man, <laughs> Tyrese Maxey is faster than gossip. <laughs> is he? Is he? he he's unbelievable, man. He, he, he's on he, another level. He can turn off the light in the room and get in bed before it's dark. <laughs> Ali. It, it felt a, it felt a bit of it, a bit, little bit like a trap game with Embiid out. But then I thought the Raptors kind of weathered that storm in the first quarter. But then Tyrese Maxey just continued to tear it up. Maxi, I mean, he's not a secret no more, right? No. Even last year in the playoffs, he had big moments. He had big games. And you talk to, being being in Philly, you talk to Doc Rivers, you know, I used to spend a lot of time with Sam Cassell. They love this kid. His work ethic, he works. He's a worker. And his attitude, like his energy, like has the best attitude, kind of like what we talk, how we talk about Scotty and his attitude and his energy. He's like that, Tyrese eh? Maxime, Ma Maxime. Tyrese Maxey is that, that same type of person. Sherm, sure, you mentioned this on the last show, that he might be the number two option for Philadelphia, or should be. What did you think tonight? He was a number one <laughs> and 1A one yeah. and two and yeah. number three. I mean, I think Philly's going to have to make a decision and figure out how to incorporate Tyrese Maxey more consistently in more prominent moments. And I know you got Joel and you got James Harden. But I think you got to utilize this young man. He changes the complexion of the game for that whole squad. Yeah. And he's the only one that can do it the way he does it. Yes. And I also think that he makes life easier for Joel Embiid and James Harden. When they let him go and let him do what he does, he gets the double teams. Now these guys can play one-on-one -on, -one on the back end or four-on-three on the other side. So to me, it's a logical business decision to give him more opportunities with the ball in his hands because he's that good. I, I, I think people look too much towards Joel and James in that sense, Sherman. I think you're right. You start to get that guy or any other guy involved. I mean, we saw it for years. Yeah. Nick Nurse drawing up game-winning plays for Pascal Siakam. He's got Kyle Lowry and he's got Kawhi Leonard, but he draws it up for Pascal Siakam. That's a great point. Yeah. We, were, yeah. we were walking up the stairs one night during the championship season on the plane. It was a close game at Indiana. They ended up winning the Raptors. And I said to Nick, so who'd you have it drawn up for tonight? Like just, he said, Norman Powell. Mm -hmm. And you start to empower those guys. And now the rest of the league starts to say, it's probably gonna be James probably going to be Joel but all of a sudden Maxi gets a touch or he gets a late it's like wait a minute now you've got you've got to spread it thin to try and cover all the options I, I tell you the one thing right if you look at the the, the the NBA and you look at certain things 
it's not far-fetched that he goes to the bench and come off in a second unit. If you look at a Tyler Hero, and I'm not saying, I'm not comparing a Tyler Hero, a Jordan Poole, the money that your number one, two options, they're going to play. They just, from not reasons of just playing they, they're good or not, for every other reason. If it's an op opportunity for this guy to go to the bench and lead that second unit, play starter minutes, and that's just something you yeah. think about. Until you move one of those guys or he signs that extension, now he has to play. Like a Jordan Poole last year, he was magnificent, right? right? He signed a 140. It's not bench money anymore. He's no. not going to be. And now you're starting to look at some things. you got to make decisions with Klay Thompson. You have to make decisions with Draymond Green. Tyrese Maxey probably will be one of those in one of those situations. But, but to that point, you know, last year we were saying James Harden wasn't the same guy. Right. We're not sure if he's going to be the same guy this year. There you go. There you go. There's the box the, scores the for everybody. Book. There you go. The full and, box. And, and, and if he is Al great, Nick, not through. a box score show. But, this is not a box <laughs> score show. But if he, he isn't, score. if he isn't that guy, <laughs> yeah. if he isn't that guy, Tyrese Maxey's next. Oh, no, for sure. And, and I don't think you can... I don't think you can undersell that point. And I'll tell you this, it's not far beyond. I, I remember, it's not about me, Arner, but I remember playing in a situation with no. On this show today, it is. <laughs> I, no, I, remember, first time? I, I remember when I was playing, I was coming off the bench. I never had 40 in my life, whatever, so that wasn't the decision. But it was Mark Jackson. And for whatever reason, Lenny Wilkins saw something in me that he was yep. like, this team may could be a little different not better but just different or something he was looking for and they made a trade or whatever to help me get in that position that's always a possibility yep. as well when you yep. got to move pieces around because doc rivers is that a, he's he has to make a decision yep. this kid yep. can't continue to be the third option sitting around waiting he changes the complexity well, that, that's of the on daryl maury and elton brand too and i want to say yeah. this too when you double team james harden and you get the ball out of his hands or joel and the double team wins. Mm -hmm. When you double team Tyrese Maxey and get the ball out of his hands, Set it today. he's extended the double team. He's pulled it so far away that now your defense is compromised because you have to aggressively attack him wherever he is on the floor if you're going to double team him. He's too quick. You can't leave it early. And now he wins the double team by extending your defense out to half court to try and get the ball out of his hands. And all of a sudden now, you're kicking the ball to a James Harden who's operating four on three from the three-point line in, that's deadly. Uh, I, I just think the other part of that, too, is initially you take the ball out of James's hands and you give it to Tyrese Maxey, he can kill you in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You give him an advantage situation yeah. where people are rotating to him, like I'm killing these fries right now. I know, I'm going to say, you're going to take all of them? Lights you know, first of all, you keep reaching yeah, over me, dog. Yeah, I'm out. the only one that's using a fork, though. Uh, that's cool, but you're not supposed to use a fork with fries. This is you finger are. foods, and you're not supposed to reach over me, dog. When it's community food, you've got to use some utensil. I hey. thought, uh, you know what? The prongs. That's because you're the first time. This is your first time. We're going to let it slide. My right. bad, because my main man, Jones is eating a pizza with knife and fork. Okay, that's a good lunch. We've got a question from the live chat, guys. H1 Joe uh, says, obviously the Raps had a rough game, but what are some of the positives you can take from this tonight? Paul? OG was very good. OG yeah. was aggressive. He was special yeah. tonight. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, it was good to see him score, but I thought defensively, he was phenomenal. Yeah. And again, with OG, when you look at the pecking order, there's Pascal, there's Scotty, there's Fred, there's Gary Trent Jr. On a night where OG puts it together offensively while still maintaining his level on the defensive end, I would like to see this team get a W in that scenario yeah, because yeah. he's just playing just a great brand of basketball and he's just sacrificing the whole time. No one got hurt and it's always DeMar. That's what's to take away from it. <laughs> yeah, no one got <laughs> Listen. We talked about the schedule many times. Simple. <laughs> we Simple. talked about the schedule many times. It's like the baseball doubleheader. The split. Philly, it's kind of a playoff situation. They've been in town for two days stewing about that loss. And they've had all kinds of time to go over stuff. I thought they were going out. I wish they were going out to the bar. I mean, but, but they figured it out. Yeah. And the way the Raptors won the last game by dictating the tempo, 
and keeping Philly at arm's length, Philly totally reversed that tonight. Yeah. They came out, they hit first, and even when Toronto had cut it to six or eight, you just you were just waiting for Toronto to get over the hump, yeah. and Philly stretches it out again. But, but it's interesting. It was a two-point game after the first quarter. I know. Both teams shot 50%, yeah. so not much defense was being played. So Let me ask you your it was feeling, good. though, Sherm. Your My feeling was good. As long as they didn't allow Tyrese Maxey to continue the, the trend he was on, I was good with it. Yeah, yeah. You were down, too. Yeah. It's the second quarter that got him. Yeah. They gave him 37 points in the second quarter. Right. I want to go back real quick, though, Al, to, uh, to OG, because obviously we know the work that he's put in summer after summer, and, and we heard about it again this summer. Is there an adjustment period or a feeling out period that when you put in all that work and then you come to the actual game action, that it takes some of actual, actualization, some realization. Of like, course, because what's going on there? Your teammates aren't with you when you're working out in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to integrate that. Like you can work on your handle and your pull up and whatever, but now you have to find that at the right spot in the game yeah. and in the flow of the offense. And you can't come across as too thirsty. Oh, he worked on his game this summer, so he's not going to pass to anybody. That's part of the adjustment to find it within the framework of the offense and right. not come off like you're thirsty all the time. So it takes time. To no, me. 100%. And it's never the moment, right? When you work out, it's never the workout. First, second, third game is never that. It what comes after that. Yeah. It's like, how do you build? I worked on these things. Because you can work on a jump shot all day. And you go to a game where you're Fred Van Vliet today, right? So what, he can't shoot or he didn't work on his jump shot? So everything comes in time. Everything comes in situations. And when you're playing in a game, there's so many different situations. So it never, you never know what's going to happen. You just know what you're prepared for and what you have confidence in doing. And as Jonesy says, everything that you do in the summer, how does it transfer into what your team needs? The team needs you to play this way. It has to transfer into that. So everything will come. And you saw tonight, he can infect the game all the time with his defense, his energy, his athleticism, and we know what he can do on the offensive side, and it's just about all of those things coming together. And it's still early in the season. Training camp back in the day was a whole month. You got in shape, you got your chemistry, you got everything together. Offense always came a little late. Now, these first couple weeks and this first month, this is really part of training camp for teams to really get together. So then how do you navigate that, Sherm? How do you navigate developing sort of these skills over time and then, you know, implementing in the game while still being a part of the team and, you know, pass, making sure Pascal goes off and Fred and Gary gets his shots and all that kind of stuff? Okay, I'm going to take us back to a former Raptor in DeMar DeRozan. Okay. I was going to go out Alvin Williams. All right. He, no, wasn't, no. he wasn't born. No, no, no. <laughs> DeMar DeRozan came back every summer with something in his game. Yeah. He got better at something every time he came back. And what he worked on was what the team looked at and said, this is what we want to see you work on. And he comes back with that so that he can still fit into what the team is trying to do. When players go away to work on their game, they're getting instruction from the team to say, listen, yeah. we want you to look at these three areas, four areas, whatever it is, and this is what we need you to come back with. Because they know, big picture, it's going to help their team as well as individuals. So nobody's going out there and saying, well, I didn't score 20 last year, so I'm coming back scoring 20. If the team doesn't want you to score 20, it doesn't matter. You're not yeah. coming back to do that. So it's an easy balance because you have your instructions when you leave your exit interviews. They yeah. kind of give you that information. Yep. So they used to give us a packet, like a pack of everything you got to need to work on, cardio, strength, like a, skill. Like how like how thick is this? Mine was this big. I needed to work on a whole lot of things. But, but also to your point, that's there. But then you do have some players that say, I need to do more. I can do more. My free agency is coming up. Right. I need to do. Like, so you have to have, and I think, and I, I credit Nick Nurse a lot when it comes to having everybody on the same page, kind of like playing for the team. Because a lot of times the hardest thing is to get all 15 or however many guys on the roster all on the same page and play for the team. Because there's so many individuals that's trying to do what they need to do to be the type of pro they want to be. Yeah, I know I know Sherm averaged 25 last year, but Sherm already signed his uh, five-year deal. 
I'm, I'm on my free agent. Uh, I need. That's so I wish need, that was true. <laughs> yeah, I, I need like, to get at like, least you're 20. About the right shirt, but so I'm just saying that was true. Well, Jonesy had 12, 12, uh, 12 minutes more than I had. I need to get all of those yeah. to get that. So now, guess what? Am I going to sacrifice for the team, or am I, I'm going to try to take away from everything else? So you got to find that right balance to what you were saying. I think I think the Raptors do a good job over the summer too of sending their coaches to work with guys Absolutely. and They're in having yeah. while these improvements are going on having group workouts yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That, those are key like you can see as a player who's on the team oh randy didn't go away and work on his stuff and come back and now he's trying to integrate it randy's working on his stuff as we're all together and now i'm more confident like you know what he couldn't make that jump shot last year but it's okay now he's been working on it I don't have a problem giving it to him. Because yeah. when you come back with that new jump shot and I haven't seen it, I ain't passing you the ball till I'm sure you can make it. Right, right. And hey, you know what? That is, because they start sending coaches. Rico Hines. Out. They start, but you know what else? Secret, secret information. Okay, uh -oh. okay, some, here some, we go. Some of those coaches, they, they're, they're seeing your attitude. Uh, yeah. They're yeah. watching your yeah. temperament. They're watching your behavior yeah. because that's going to be reported as well. They're working out hard, but he had this issue. Or this is what we think we're going to deal with when they're coming in. So what's across the board? The coaches out there, they're not just evaluating your play. They're evaluating, have you come to the workouts late? Are you, are you coming at all? On all of those things, because that information is critical when you're building your team. It's funny you say that because I was at, at Summer League with the team this year covering it for Open Gym, and I saw, you know, in one of these Rico runs, Scotty was playing and they were doing, you know, going up to seven, but after you make the, the seventh point, you have to go to the free throw free line throw. and legitimize it with uh, it. A, a free throw. And Scotty missed his free throw and he was so mad for an extended period of time about a pickup game at 9.30 in the morning in Vegas in July that I'm like, okay, that, that's, that shows that's you what something. you yeah. want. Yeah. That yeah. is yeah. what yeah. you want. And he was, he was visibly upset about that one, one shot. That's that's crazy. It's me. nothing like playing amongst your peers yeah. and wanting to be evaluated by your that's, peers. That's right. a validation. Yeah. That's it. When yeah. your peers tell me, once again, I think back, and we all think back. It doesn't matter what other people said, but if you played against somebody that has a name, like, yo, man, you got game, or you make me work hard, that's like, OK. Yeah. All right, man. Validation, man. I remember not playing at all, playing against the Lakers. I got benched. Or whatever. They made a shift in the lineup, so I didn't play. And I was disappointed, and I remember going out to the back, and Shaq was out there, and he was like, you hurt? I was like, nah. He was like, you just didn't play? I was like, nah, you didn't play me today. Keep your head up, man, you got game. Shaquille O'Neal telling me that, right. right? So I'm like, all right. So that made me go, like, stay focused, stay yeah. on track. Yeah. So you, the validation from your peers, that, that's huge. So, so when, the, when you said Lenny Wilkins saw something in you, uh, earlier in the show, you said that, and you know, made some trades. And hey, it was shocking the, it, the day they traded Mark Jackson. I was with Mark Jackson. Did you feel I was ready for that? Would you, were you ready for that? Were you really, eh? I didn't know what. I mean, but yeah. you know, my career the whole time, I, it was up and down. Yeah. I really didn't know what was going on, and I saw. I had a feeling of the business, but I knew I was coming off the bench, and I felt very comfortable. I love playing with Mark. Vince was doing his thing, and our team was just. It would start coming together, but I start seeing, I start playing more and more in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And those things started happening. At the end of the day, Mark demanded so much respect, and Lenny Wilkins probably didn't feel right of me having his minutes in the fourth quarter. Right. So they made a decision. Right. I don't know the whole business behind it, but I felt good once it happened. And Lenny Wilkins, once again, he communicated with me and brought me in there and said, Everything you were doing before the trade, continue to do that. So it wasn't any pressure to, all right, yeah. you're the starter now. Yeah. This yeah. is what we need you to do. Yeah. So it was communication, and it was just, we had a we had a veteran team as well. I want to jump real quick back to the game, Sherm, just just because I'm starting to see a little bit of a trend in some of these these games with, with these droughts offensively. You know, the Raptors are going two, three minutes without a bucket. Things get a little bit sloppy defensively and offensively during those. What are you seeing and how do they fix it? Their ball movement slows down when yeah. they struggle to score the basketball. Yeah. Especially on the, when they when Philly went to zone too. Yeah. There was a lot of stagnant. But not only that, their body movement slows down as well. Yeah. 
you look at the game on Wednesday, how many behind the defense cuts did Pascal deliver the ball to under the basket? How many did we see in this game? None. Ha rare, yeah, rarely. Yeah, rarely. Yeah, we rarely, and rarely. Yeah. Out of rarely bounds, saw yeah. it. So when the ball slows down, they're not moving the ball, they're not moving bodies. Until they get up and down in transition, mm -hmm. they struggle to score. And that's why in the third quarter, even though it wasn't a pretty third quarter, they had nine transition points, six turnovers, because they changed the tempo of the game. And that's when they had a chance to kind of close the distance there. And then the end of the quarter didn't go well, and that kind of hurt them. But they're not a team that can be stagnant offensively if they don't move the ball and move bodies. And if they're not turning you over and getting out in transition, they're taking away a huge strength of their uh, game. The turnover so. differential from last game to this game was flipped. Philly did to Toronto what Toronto did to them in the first game. Turned them over, scored points off the turnover. You're taking the ball out of the hoop, you're looking at a, a picture of the defense going up the floor. They got five guys back there after they've scored. They've hustled back. There are no live ball turnovers to give you three on ones and, 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 and four on two broken floors. And I thought Philly did a really good job of that tonight, not turning the ball over. When you look at turnovers and points off turnovers, Philly won that battle tonight. Toronto won it big the other night, and I think that's, that's part of the correlation as to why the games turned out the way they did. Want me, want me to help you how to stop runs in the NBA? Yeah, I do, actually. Like every other sport, baseball, football, soccer, hockey, I don't know, you know all this stuff. Cricket. You got to have Spike offense, off. And you got to have defense. Basketball is a sport. Offense turns into defense. Defense, like it goes back and forth. Yeah. So no matter what people say about offense, it will affect your defense if shots aren't going in. If your defense is suffering and people are cutting you up, you're thinking about that. Then now you get selfish on the offensive end. Until you have a defensive team that say we're just concentrating on defense, and then we can stop this and we can focus on that. It's all about a mentality because in basketball it goes so. It transfers so fast that people really let one aspect of the game affect another critical aspect of the game, yeah. offense and defense. Yeah, It's funny, you know what it's like. You make a bucket, how much more amped you, you are on defense. For sure, guy <laughs> sure. scores, nice scores a bucket, he's the you, first one back on if defense. You, yeah. If you yeah. could put scoring in a needle, yeah. it would cure every disease yeah. in, the, in the world. Well, hold on, if you can, if you know even if I don't score, I can stop that dude. To me, that's a bigger confidence. It is. That, that I know when but I can't How many score. players are like that? No, but that's what I'm saying to you. This team, the Raptors, they're built on their defense. That's why when they're not getting stops, they struggle. Yeah. Because uh, no, they're sure. built off their defense. I, 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 and I think part of that, too, is the whole struggling on offense. Are you really giving the effort defensively? You're right, Sherm. They are built on the defense. But... You're not scoring at the other end. You're, there's a distraction of like, we need to get the ball back. Now you start gambling, you start reaching, maybe you're out of position. Like you're trying defensively, but you may, may not be as focused or have the five guys on a string. Second game way. in Miami, ugly game. Mm. Ugly it up. Neither team shot over 40%, I don't think. But guess what? They won it. Yeah. Because even though they couldn't score, they knew Miami yeah, couldn't score. The other end. But you, yeah. you know what, you know what you're doing? What am I doing? You're being a hypocrite, dog. Why is that? Yeah, because I'm talking about. You know why you're being a hypocrite? Why? Because you're not, you're not looking at it from a player anymore. You're looking at it from us being old heads and like a coach's lens, saying defense. As a player, you want to score buckets. I wish I had known this when I was a player. Yeah. I wish I had believed in it when I was a player. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. You live, you learn, you get better. And I'm saying to you now, I understand it yeah. when coaches told me that, and I was like, whatever. Hey, but now I get ball, it. Let me score. Because the confidence is built in, no matter what I'm doing offensively, right. if I can stop you, yep. my offense will come. Yeah. But as players, we think, if I can light it up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's let like me make one. Just my let chest me make is going to swell. Yeah. My yeah. shoulders raise. Basketball is the only, I won't say it again because I don't know every that's sport. That, that's that fake stuff you're putting in your veins. No, ba <laughs> <laughs> basketball is the only sport that you can get, I won't say only sport, that you can get immediate gratification. Oh, good shot. Oh, good pass. 
Oh, you can always get There's some an affirmation ultimate success about success and failure on every trip. Everywhere. But listen to what we're saying. What about oh, good block? Oh, no, you, great you, rebound. You can, you can get that too. But that's not what we talk about. But that don't get you the girls. Oh. <laughs> that don't get you the girls. Listen, that don't, that don't get you the ladies. Give me. You got to score. What they say? Wait, they love wait. the long. You got to love the long. Hey, oh, hey, man. Hey. Give me the commas and the zeros. <laughs> you can All keep right. the ladies. All right. How much defense Tyler Harrow play? <laughs> What's that? How much defense does Tyler Harrow play? None. But Jordan he's, Poole play. None. All right. So let's keep talking. But wait a second. Let's wait a second. Talking. You act like defensive players don't get money. Name one. Defensive players? I, I, I defense, yes. Name one. Dude, Dennis, the, the league has been littered with Dennis Name Rodman. Name one today. Oh, today. Rudy, Rudy's getting paid okay. Rudy. Rudy, Rudy Gobert. Gobert. Yes. One. Marcus Smart, he's doing okay. So Draymond's right. getting paid the way he Draymond? quarterbacks? Draymond? Like, come on, man. Come on, listen, God. listen. We're in a, you league, know we're in a league that pays for offense. I get it. I know what you're talking about, Al. What wins the championships? Defense. Okay. No, I'm with you. I'm 100%. I'm just here for the entertainment. I'm here after the game. No, you're here to eat. That's right. what you're here to do. Are you having I'm a good sweating. time? This is I'm... your first time on the show. Are you going to come back? or? Oh, look at that makeup. No, man, I'm not coming back. Oh, Hell yeah. Man. As long as you guys invite me. This is fun, man. I'm with my brothers. We, we, didn't, even we didn't even get to the pizza. I, I was scared to eat it with my hands because my main man was so <laughs> etiquette. He's eating with knife and fork. Do you remember when we uh, when we first like kind of became friends? Are, are we friends? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. yeah, I was going to say, that's a very <laughs> that's, aggressive that statement. Yeah, you, put me, a, you put me in a bind. It's a personal <laughs> statement hey, yeah, for this show. He looked at the camera, too. Are we friends? Yeah, <laughs> that's a personal statement for this show. We were, we were, in, we were in Philly. Raptors were playing Philly. Okay. Be on wall. Like it was a sweep. I saw you outside the hotel. And I went to go play ball in the park. He's gonna lie. He's yeah, not a liar. I went to go right play now. ball in the park. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we talked, and I told him. man, just nothing. say no. <laughs> Before the story ends, just say no. <laughs> I, nothing happened. But then we went, I went and played at this park. The funny thing is, I'm playing, I'm killing these guys at this park down the street from the hotel, and I'm walking out of the park, and I just see somebody getting punched in the face. I'm like, God, I got out of there. This is what Philly's like. Is that what Philly's like? But you were killing them at the park. I was killing them like on right. the court. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I believe you. Hold on. I believe Why you. Hold on, hold on, like hold on for one second. That's not what, happening. What park was that? <laughs> yeah, really. It was a grade school park. <laughs> it wasn't downtown. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It wasn't downtown. <laughs> it was <laughs> kindergarten to grade eight. It wasn't downtown. <laughs> yeah. It was I, kindergarten to grade eight. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, I wasn't there. It was between Philly and Pittsburgh, one of those parks. It wasn't downtown. Anyway. I don't even know. I told you about it. You thought it was funny at the time. It was too long-winded, the story. <laughs> I know, it sucked. That was cool. It was a good time, though. <laughs> but do you remember? Next game, next game for the Raptors <laughs> is Monday night, 7.30 against the Atlanta Hawks. We're going to do this show again. Yo, you what? was killing them, dog. <laughs> I remember. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, I'm on top. It's Rand. He was killing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My man just called me. Don't forget, we're going to be live on YouTube, live from Real Sports. Send your questions. Come watch the show. Maybe hang out with Alvin Williams. He might be your friend for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're killing him. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time.